We've been talking a lot about one of my favorite projects ever. That that it, it, it's a drama fest, you know. It's a, it's a journey. The bigger it gets, the more drama, the more delicious, juicy pieces of drama. But let's not forget <laughs> this journey has been a very long one called Star Citizen, and now they are at a six hundred million dollar revenue total. They've eclipsed six hundred million. And for some, they're like this. And for others, they're like this. Boo! 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 And what you're seeing now is a, a bifurcation. You're starting to see that the, the adoption is getting um, thick. And there's a lot of people in this now. The noise, the chatter, the 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 monetization of your eyeballs of you it's it's on an epic scale which is why i know that the project generally is successful the fact that this company can bring in 600 million dollars is a feat unto itself the ship sales get old and repetitious to the point where you think like oh they're just fleecing everybody and yet on the other side of that coin people are responsible adults and will spend whatever it is that they want to spend out of their discretionary income there are a few people that have illnesses that can't stop the spending, and I feel sorry and bad for those particular gamers. But for the most part, people are not victims. They will spend it if they believe in the project, and they will get mad later on, 10 years later, when it's still going on. <laughs> sorry, I had to. But I am one of those dudes that I'm super chill. I said last night at the after party after we gave our $1,000 Endeavor Master Set prize out, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. From St. Grizz. Congratulations, by the way, to our winner. I said, you know what? I'm actually happy that we have done so much for this project that together as a community. We have banded together. We have taken what it is as a community and put it into a fund and we have bought prizes that have helped further on the project. We have great people here that donate uh, prizes that also adds to the journey. And some people would be upset at that. I'm a big picture guy. I want this to become a reality. I think there's a lot of gamers out there that would love to say, hey, I need an everything game where I can do everything I can imagine in a game, which is how Star Citizen gets you. Right. And I'm fine that it got me like that because I'm looking at this way far back. Right. Sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm knee deep in it. Other times I'm back and I'm looking at the big picture of all and I'm saying, okay, I want to see this become a reality. Along the way, things happen in a manner where people start to get upset. Right. The bigger it gets, the more snafus there are. You got a company, Cloud Imperium making Star Citizen that hit $600 million in revenue. Will they keep up with this crazy pace? Let's look at the graph. And this year in 2023, they, are, uh, they have raised $59 million, okay? So we're a little over the halfway point, and they're at $59 million. I'm going to predict that they're probably going to end the year up around the 90 million mark, maybe mid-90s. I'm going to say 92 to 102 as well, they'll probably land up for the end of the year. I don't think they'll beat last year's because of the way that the market has been for everybody. Have you gone to the grocery store? <laughs> Have you paid for gas, man? So there's going to be a hurt coming, and it's going to be felt everywhere, including Star Citizen. But it's even going to be more hurt, and the revenues will be more hurt if they don't start focusing on PR. I can't express this enough. I've said this till I'm blue in the face. That because of decisions that have been made, right or wrong, whether people have opinions that it's a right or wrong opinion about what is happening, that's up to the people, that's up to you guys to decide. They need somebody to regulate the message to smooth out problems between gamers and developers. They need a PR person and they're going to need one big time going into 2024. They're going to start decreasing their expenses. We just read a story where they're cutting 
people uh, where they're laying off some people. And that's what happens, unfortunately, in a bear market in a capitalistic society. OK, so I don't think you're going to see these numbers beat last year. Now, Citizen Con is crazy good. And everything at Citizen Con is just off the wall crazy. Then I think what you're going to end up finding is that possibly they can they can beat the numbers. Possibly, I'm not in the camp that that's going to happen. I think Citizen Con this year. I'm hoping for a lot, uh, and I'm not I'm not going to expect it, but I'm hoping for it. You know, so I'm thinking it's going to be a mediocre ish citizen con with maybe some bright points in it and i think for the most part hopefully it'll satisfy people because if it doesn't watch out because this is a cyclical thing people's perspective on the project through the year through a full year of development of star citizen the sentiment gets super low Right around July, August, September-ish, right around there. In fact, it's more July and August because in September you get a whole bunch of leaks of what's going to happen at Citizen Con and then people start to get excited again. But this is a familiar thing that most Star Citizen veterans, people involved in this, are accustomed to. We realize that this is just part of this cycle, okay? I just am hoping that Citizen Con is going to be amazing. And I'm hoping I can spend the entire day with you guys like I normally do. I will keep you guys posted because Citizen Con is a fun time with you guys. And I would like to do like last stream, what was it, like a seven to, to eight hour stream we had like all day. It was really fun. And I enjoy just spending that time with you guys and kind of parsing through all the new stuff that happens in Star Citizen. But I would like to say this. This was a very positive article. I, re I read this and it was kind of white knight-ish, you know. Um, but, like, the, the, the thing is, is that they raised $600 million and they need cash. A game development company needs cash. They burn through cash like crazy. And ship seals, unfortunately, for good or for bad, have to continue at the pace, at the clip that they are. Because it is their lifeblood as surviving as a company in the game development world to make it a, a reality. And it's a necessary evil. You have to put money in to get anything out. And, you know, a lot of people say, what about what about what's going on in Cloud Imperium, DG? Okay, we, we talked about the employee last night. I gave you the whole breakdown. That should be out on the channel today, by the way. If you're curious about what I had to say about this ex-Cloud Imperium employee that came out, I had a lot to say about that last night. You can check that out on the channel. For today's discussion, I will say this. You have to kind of zoom out and look at the entirety of what it is that's happening here. You're going to see problems along the way. Trust me. There's going to be ups. There's going to be downs. But at the end of the day, people still want the everything game experience. And they're willing to pay for it in a bear market, which gave them $600 million in revenue. And those are just the cold, hard facts. Am I applauding, Chris? Am I applauding the developers, people who are angry with me and think that that was a very white knight thing to do? Am I applauding that? No. I'm applauding the idea of what Star Citizen is trying to achieve. I'm applauding the dream. I'm applauding wanting this to become a reality. When you zoom out and you look at it from that angle, it's a little bit easier. It's a little bit easier to be involved in this journey. It's a little bit easier to enjoy the ride. And guess what? If people, if you're getting that upset, walk away from it. Nobody's forcing people to have to endure it. <laughs> Everybody sold you on this idea that it's so terrible to have to endure all this injustice. It's a game. It's a project. At the end of the day, you can walk away. You can play something else. Be a rational MFer. You can come back to it whenever you feel like it. It's not anything that people are forcing upon you. And yet, boy, that content out there makes it feel like you're just like an indentured slave continually taking the wrongs of Cloud Imperium. 
they're just a corporation trying to survive in this jungle. They're going to do whatever it is they need to do. Their decisions might not be right, might be clumsy. They might trip at times. But this is the entirety of my argument. As a gamer, I've always wanted an everything experience in a game. The only people I see trying to do that out there are Cloud Imperium. Name me somebody else that's trying to do as much. I think if you just look around and you ask if there's anybody else, just getting crickets. So I actually applaud them for continuing on, man. But mostly, I'm applauding this journey and this idea of trying to get there. If we don't get there, we don't get there. But damn, isn't it fun? It's a fun ride. It's a fun ride, and I love it.